What's up guys, this is Chris here, and today we're gonna be out of our element one more time. We are gonna be going over not just a revolver, but a pocket revolver. I actually have a lot of videos on carry guns coming up, so I'm going to be doing a good bit of different stuff. Uh, a little bit more pocket 380 stuff, a little bit more uh, 38 special 357 revolvers. And I thought there'd be no better start to this series of videos than the Ruger LCRX. Uh, this is a gun that's been out for quite a while, but it is a lot of gun for the money, at least so I've heard. I have have shot a Ruger LCR in the past, but I've never owned one. So uh, this time I was like, hey, you know what? Let's take one of the most popular carry revolvers and put it through its paces and compare it to some of the most popular semi-autos and some of the other most popular revolvers as well. Ruger and Smith & Wesson are by far my favorite revolver uh, manufacturers, so I figured this would be a really good place to start. I went over to my local store and I was like, you know what, what's the best revolver for the money? And I came out of there with this. Now this uh, Ruger LCRX is in 357 Magnum. However, they do make it in just 38. They also make it in 9mm, 22, and I believe 22 Magnum. Now the interesting part about Iowa is that everyone always farms and they drive by my house, all of them at once. The interesting part about this uh, caliber is that it only has about one and 1.8 inches of barrel. So ballistically inferior to a lot of other guns, however, it makes it very easy to conceal carry. Even with that big ass grip, it conceals just fine. I mean, that's literally in my fucking pocket right now. I didn't even think about it. I forgot it was there. Yeah. Very cool gun. I'm gonna keep this. The reason why I said that's interesting about the caliber is because even though this is chambered in 357 Magnum, 357 Magnum out of a one inch barrel is not gonna get the same ballistic capability as let's say a four inch or especially a six or an eight inch. And at least from what I've heard, it is comparable to a 38 plus P that is meant for shorter barrels. Now, I'm not sure if there's 357 that's meant for shorter barrels like there is nine millimeter and uh, lots of other calibers, but I'm sure there probably is. But that being said, uh, I hear at least that a 38 is the most common caliber shot out of even the 357 models. The reason for that I also imagine is because this gun is very lightweight. I actually have the big ass grip on here. I don't know if that's the actual name, but that's what I'm gonna call it, the big ass grip. And that's one of the reasons why I picked this gun up. It does come with a little shorty grip as well that you'd be more likely to use if you were going to be carrying it all the time. Making it not only a very small package, but it's very light at around 17 ounces. Now you are at a loss for capacity there with only a five round cylinder. Over five rounds in the right spot will do the job almost all the time. Uh, concealed carry statistics, things like that, usually three to five rounds, two to three rounds, depending on which one you see. That being said, five generally has you covered. You can also carry a speed loader or two and uh, pop them in there really quick. Most people will say that revolver reloads are gonna be slower than semi-autos, and I would absolutely agree with that. However, you can bump those numbers up. I don't know if you've ever seen a guy named Jerry Michalek, but he can reload a revolver really, really fast. Not not saying everybody can do that, I'm just saying it is certainly possible so you can increase your skill level with reloads. There's some advantages to revolvers. Number one, they're very easy to use. Not a lot to go wrong there, not a lot of user-induced error. Semi-automatics have a lot of user-induced malfunctions for people getting used to it, learning curve it. Most people can pick up a revolver and they know to press the button, open the cylinder, load the rounds in there, and there's no spring pressure, so if you have arthritis hands, uh, maybe you have a little bit weaker hands, whatever, you can calmly kind of thumb the, the rounds into the cylinder and then use the gun. Now, the gun is double single action with an exposed hammer. You can get them with uh, internal hammers as well. If you don't wanna get the hammer caught in anything, those are really good for like shooting in really close quarters, things like that. I like to be able to have the hammer there to thumb because if given the opportunity, if I need to take a long range shot, I can take my support hand, slide my thumb over, I I can put that in single action have a lighter crisper trigger pull but I also like the double action because it makes it a little bit safer to carry and uh, the double action long pull acts as a bit of a safety that you can overcome with your trigger finger so it is nice it's like a safety that you don't have to actually learn how to use although the problem with guns like this is gonna be sh not only short sight radius but you're gonna have rudimentary sights at best I like this one comes with a fiber optic front however the sight radius is very narrow and the barrel is very short. The gun is also very light and the trigger is very heavy, making it one of the most difficult guns to be accurate with, and you're probably gonna see that here in a little bit. Uh, 
I like guns like this though because they allow you a challenge when it comes to dry fire practice. If you can dry fire effectively with a gun like this, you can really nail down something like a 1911 or a CZ. And basically just holding that gun on target all the time and repeat, pull the trigger, see if the sights came off target, pull the trigger, see if the sights came off target, pull the trigger, and get used to that nice smooth double action pull. Now, it is heavy, don't get me wrong, but when I tried this in the uh, store before I bought it, I did find out that this gun has one of the one of the smoothest double action pulls I've ever tried. It's interesting because people talk about trigger weight a lot, and it, for some reason, in do, especially double action revolvers, somewhere between nine and 12 pounds doesn't matter as much as the, the lack of, of feel, like the lack of feeling the linkage coming through. I don't wanna have like a stagey trigger, I don't like that. Now, of course, that's personal preference, but I don't like when a trigger, you can feel it here, you can feel it here, you can feel it here. This trigger feels super smooth and one trigger pull all the way through. And I really like that. And uh, let's see uh, when we go down range on how that, uh, how that actually equates to real life accuracy, but so far it feels really good. So your limiter on capacity, your limiter on accuracy, what you get out of the deal is bomb proof reliability, durability, super easy to use, and uh, super easy to acquire in a fight, which is very important. A lot of times, especially if you do combatives, uh, jiu-jitsu with firearms, things like that, submission wrestling uh, with firearms or weapons, you will find that you will get your semi-automatic pistol caught up in your shirt a lot, especially if you fire one round. And if you fire one round, that shirt gets caught in the slide, the gun is a paperweight. And people always say, well, you know, just do your malfunction clearance. But if somebody's beating the shit out of you, it's kind of hard to all oh, think, tap, rack, and reload, and all that. Whereas a revolver, click, 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 and hopefully the problem goes away. Not saying that's gonna be the case all the time, but it is a slight advantage. Now, before we go down to the uh, range and shoot this gun, I do wanna mention my Patreon supporters. Thank you guys very much. Because of you, I can get guns like this. Patreon supporters paid for this. If you want to join the Patreon squad, what you do is go to the link in the description. It's the best way to support the channel. Also in the description is a link to a local shelter in Ames, Iowa. It's the YSS. It could really use your help. So please go down there and donate to those kids. Now, a lot of people ask me in the comments of the last revolver video how I load my revolver. And the answer is I load it the exact way Jerry Michalek told me to load it. Uh, one of the things I like to do when I'm learning Learning a new firearm is I like to figure out what person is the best with that firearm and then replicate what they do for success and then tailor it to however my hand size or my particular body type or my shooting style actually fit and I think that's a good start for most people so let's try this at 75 yards but as this is going to be a very difficult gun to shoot I'll be very impressed if I hit and I obviously did not. <laughs> well, I'll take that. <laughs> there you go, see? Dang! Who said you can't hit 75 yards of pocket pistols? Well, you thought you couldn't. No. That last thing I said about like finding somebody that's really good at a thing and then replicating what they do, I cannot stress enough how important the last portion of that is, like making it your own. Because it's really difficult to try to do the exact thing that somebody does, but they, sur they sure can give you a guideline at least. Oh, I hit it 75, but I missed it 45. That's how important shooting fundamentals are. Let's try one double action. Sometimes I'm better in double than I am single, because I'm thinking more. Oh, flinch and all. That's funny. Everybody flinches. Especially when they get a soccer ball kicked at them. <laughs> all right, now we're gonna do the air weight revolver 100 yard challenge. <laughs> One's good enough. Oh, I should have reloaded. 
wish we had the intermission sound every time I load. What, what, what it, sound? You know, the song that plays every time you like have the theater intermission? Or am I just that old? Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby. Wow, the case are getting stuck like crazy in this bad boy. My favorite thing about revolvers is that I don't have to load any mags. <laughs> You're Fair on enough. your own. Do you want to load the cylinder? Nope. You sure? For nostalgia's sake? No, nope, I'm good. I'm going to let you handle it today. All right, let's act a fool. Do it. <laughs> Got to work that left hand. Suppressing fire. Oh, I'm out again. Did he fire five or did he fire six? Apparently only five, because that's what we have. I, I'm such a I'm such a six shooter guy. The five the five round cylinder is super throw me off. It's empty. I'm just getting used to the trigger. I like the double action, honestly, more than the single. Good to know. I fucked somebody up with that gun. <laughs> All right, so interestingly enough, this is like one of the categories of guns that people mostly buy for their wife and or girlfriend. So it'll be interesting for me to see your perspective on not only loading the gun, but using the gun. And you have to remember that yes, practice makes perfect. And if you practice with revolvers, you can shoot them very well. The problem I have with revolvers is that they are essentially a amateur gun it, it not, they're not they're they're a professional gun if you want to shoot them well you have to practice a lot more so than a semi-auto but people think they're an amateur gun and they buy one of those guns because they're easy to use and they can't the broadside of a barn <laughs> so i'd be interested to think see what you do with that gun here All in right. your in the 10 rounds that you have which is probably as much as your average person shoots in a year i have never loaded a revolver on my own i know i know why it's, don't you tell me what i'm doing because i don't want to tell you i want to see if it's intuitive it's not Oh, oh maybe it is. Okay. I hope everyone enjoys me looking silly. Sillier everyone than enjoys you looking sexy. Ha. <laughs> wow. Okay, babe. Thank you. All right. I'm slow. Got nails. Intermission song. Okay. All right. Now, what do yep. I do? Do I have to wrap? Do I have to do anything with it? You don't. You can actually just pull the trigger and it'll fire right in double action. That's what's nice about them. All right. Oh. A miss. Short stroke in the trigger. You have to let I it am. come out all the way. Yep. This is what I expected, actually. Now you have some that have live cylinders and some don't. There what's, you go. What's this? <laughs> that, what did I do? That's an empty gun, I oh. believe. Open up the cylinder. Wow, I'm a dope. <laughs> Open up the cylinder. Okay. Yep, and press that pusher out on the back there, push the rounds out, and reload her. I forget that the shells stay in it. Yep. Because, you know. I got more for you, here you go. Oh, all right. Well, it has a kick, that's for sure. It certainly does, yep. It, well, I mean, it's an Airweight 357 Magnum. To the, to someone who doesn't know what they're talking about, they don't know what that means. It's a big bullet and a little gun. All right, well, there you go. I suppose it is relatively, si oh. Here you go. I, I, I screwed you on one, I only gave you four. What were you saying? It is relatively simple. It is, yeah, yeah. Simple to operate and load, not simple to shoot. Right. And I think that's something that most people don't understand, which is what I'm trying to highlight here. Oh yeah, it's definitely I, not. I easy. see this a lot when you train people with firearms, you know, you they can easily load a, a revolver, but they can easily shoot a semi-auto. Oh yeah, that's for sure. All right, let's see. That a girl. See, the interesting part for me is your four out of five 
from 10 yards away. But you can hit a target with like a 1911 from like 50 yards away. True. So the accuracy curve is, and, the, and the training curve needed to fire a revolver it is a lot. You need to practice with it because that's a big long, I mean, it's a long trigger pull. Yes, it is not my favorite gun to shoot. What do you think about it though? I mean, with practice, However, it's very effective. I mean, I know, I mean, it seemed, rel like you said, relatively intuitive because you just press this, it pops out, you stick them in, you shut it, you shoot it. Pretty Absolutely. simple, pretty Absolutely. simple, but it's definitely not my favorite that I've ever shot. Right. Uh, but, I mean, it fit right in your pocket, but girls don't have big pockets like that. We have short pockets. Fair enough. But they do have purses. True. Which is not necessarily a good idea. But, I mean, we always have our purse. Until somebody steals it. Well. Or you leave it somewhere. Kick them in the nuts. All right, so first impressions of the LCRX are extremely favorable. Uh, for what it is, it, it is it is an excellent gun, in my opinion. Uh, if you're looking for a lightweight five-shot revolver, this really fits the bill. Now, one of the things that I didn't mention, or maybe I did, I can't remember, is that this does have like a polymer slash aluminum frame. And this part here is actually polymer, and I think that does help absorb the recoil a little bit. Now, recoil, on this gun is quite a lot, especially if you shot some, I mean, some of the 357 we just shot was pretty ridiculous. Uh, 38 was really easy to, to uh, use. However, um, one thing you have to remember with 38 or 357 revolvers is not only are they lightweight, they also don't have any sort of recoil dampening mechanism in them at all, like a semi-auto does. So you're gonna get the full brunt of that recoil, and on top of that, the intermission again for farming. <laughs> Planting season, what are you gonna do? So overall though, what I wanted to mention about the recoil is not only it, is it a little bit more than a semi-auto because of the fact that you don't have a recoil mitigating system in it like a recoil spring or anything like that, but you also hold the gun down here. And when the bangy bangy happens up here, you got a lot of this going on. And muzzle flip is actually what a lot of people equate to recoil impulse uh, because not only are you feeling the same overall pushback that you would, because 38 and 9mm are very similar in recoil, 38 actually being a little bit less in my personal opinion, uh, but you are feeling it above the gun a lot more which rocks the gun back. I like the hoe grip because of that, because not only does the hoe grip help out as far as like holding the gun steady, but there actually is a little bit of cushion here, uh, which feels really good. You can actually see the spot right there. I forget what the hell they actually call that thing, but that does really work. And it, it, for a very lightweight revolver, this did have very low recoil by comparison to many of the 357s that I've shot. On top of that, the accuracy was pretty good, I thought. I mean, yeah. once I got it down, of course. You did great. Yeah, we got a couple hits Me, at 75, a couple hits at, well, you, the second cylinder was much better than the first. Yeah, I was Everything is a, a learning curve. You just don't shoot True that. revolvers very much. True that. And you probably won't either, because you don't really I like never them. will. <laughs> I do, though. I love anything that works, you know what I mean? And at the end of the day, you could say revolvers are inferior to semi-autos, and in a lot of categories they are, but in a lot of categories they still are superior. There's a reason why people still buy and carry and use them successfully, because they do in fact work. And if the pros and cons of a revolver fit your lifestyle better than a semi-auto, get what works, get what you like, get what you can shoot well, get what you'll carry. And if this is all those things, absolutely go out and get one of these. Very reliable, very accurate. I got this gun for 500 bucks, which is a really good deal considering your average 357 revolver is actually a little bit more than a semi-auto. Um, these come in at about 50 bucks less than what is it, their SP-101, which is like their flagship steel frame model. But I actually got this one not only because it's cheaper, but it's lighter weight. And I know that steel frame guns shoot better, but realistically, are you more likely to carry a polymer frame gun or a steel frame gun? I think everybody really knows the answer to that. Anyway, if you like this video, please like and subscribe. Please stop by your local homeless shelters. Remember to recycle. I'll check you later. And I figured there would be no better start to that series than the Ruger LC, what the fuck is this called? Who you got? Who you got? You got a shell? Danger, what you got, buddy? Get back here, danger. Oh, okay.
Just living your best puppy life.